who created Bitcoin and when, who received the first transaction, and what actually happened in El Salvador in September 2021. This and a lot more in the following video. Hit the thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe. Bitcoin is the first cryptocurrency ever made, and also a digital decentralized currency that you can use to buy, sell, and exchange directly, without an intermediary, like a bank. Decentralization is the process of shifting control from one main group to several smaller ENES. For example, a decentralization of a government gives more power to individual states, rather than concentrating it at a federal level. In a blockchain, Decentralization refers to a transfer of control and decision-making from a centralized entity, like an individual, organization, or group, to a distributed network. However, researchers have begun to see a trend, with Bitcoin beginning to move toward centralization, as it becomes increasingly common for intermediaries to be used for buying and selling, and also for people who store large sums of Bitcoins to join together in large groups to minimize variations in their income. Researchers also believe that parts of the Bitcoin ecosystem are controlled by a small set of entities, which is a development that could threaten the decentralization. Every Bitcoin transaction that's ever been made, exists on a public ledger accessible to everyone, making transactions hard to reverse and difficult to fake. Bitcoins aren't backed by the government or any issuing institution and there's nothing to guarantee their value besides the proof baked in the heart of the system. Anton Magavoy, co-founder and CEO of the digital financial service company Holy Held, states the following, the reason why digital currency is worth money, is simply that we, as people, decide it has value, just like when it comes to gold. The creator of Bitcoin, Satoshi Nakamoto, which is a fictitious name, registered the domain bitcoin.org in August 2008, and originally described the need for, quote, an electronic payment system based on cryptographic proof instead of trust. The identity of Bitcoin's creator is still unknown, and to this day, no one knows who Satoshi Nakamoto is, or even if it is a single person or a group of several people. In January 2009, the Bitcoin network was created and the first transaction took place about a week later, and was after that, launched to the public. Since then, the digital currency has risen dramatically in value. Today, there are more than 19 million coins in circulation. The network Bitcoin is built on, is a so-called peer-to-peer network, and has no central servers. There is also no central storage, but anyone can store Bitcoin on their computer. Further, there are no individual administrators, and the ledger is maintained by a network of equally privileged miners. Anyone who wants to create a Bitcoin address, equivalent to a bank account, can do so without having to approve anything. It's the same with sending and receiving a transaction, anyone who wants to, can. All that is needed is for the network to confirm that the transaction is legitimate. Bitcoin is built on a distributed digital record, called a blockchain, which is a linked body of data, made up of units called blocks. These blocks contain information about each transaction, including date and time, total value, buyer and seller, and a unique identifying code for each exchange. So entries strung together in chronological order create a digital chain of blocks. Stacy Harris, consultant for Pelicoin, a network of cryptocurrency ATMs, states the following, once a block is added to the blockchain, it becomes accessible to anyone who wishes to view it, acting as a public ledger of cryptocurrency transactions. A blockchain is decentralized, which means it's not controlled by an organization. It's like a Google Doc that anyone can work on, says Bucci Okoro, CEO and co-founder of African cryptocurrency exchange Quidax. Nobody owns it, but anyone who has a link can contribute to it. And as different people update it, your copy also gets updated. While the idea that anyone can edit the blockchain might sound risky, it's actually what makes Bitcoin trustworthy and secure. For a transaction block to be added to the Bitcoin blockchain, it must be verified by the majority of all Bitcoin holders, 
and the unique codes used to recognize users' wallets and transactions must conform to the right encryption pattern. These codes are long, random numbers, making them incredibly difficult to produce fraudulently. The level of statistical randomness in blockchain verification codes, which are needed for every transaction, greatly reduces the risk anyone can make fraudulent Bitcoin transactions. Depending on where in the world you are, you can use Bitcoin to a varying extent. It ranges from being completely banned in some countries, to being approved by the government, for example in El Salvador, where Bitcoin is one of the country's official currencies since September 2021. Ukraine opened up and accepted Bitcoin donations in 2022, to finance the war against Russia. Iran has also used Bitcoin to circumvent sanctions laws. Software and various wallets treat all Bitcoins as equal, establishing the basic level of fungibility. Fungibility is the ability of a good or asset to be interchanged with other individual goods or assets of the same type. Fungible assets simplify the exchange and trade processes, as fungibility implies equal value between the assets. The issue has also surfaced over the years, as some users have refused to accept bitcoins from controversial transactions, which could damage fungibility, if this sort of behavior grows and becomes more widespread. Following are important historical events and dates regarding bitcoin. The domain name bitcoin.org was registered on August 18, 2008. Two months later, on October 31st, a link to an article written by Satoshi Nakamoto, titled Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system, is uploaded to a crypto mailing list. On January 3, 2009, the Bitcoin network was created by the fictitious name Satoshi Nakamoto. The first recipient of the first Bitcoin transaction was Hal Finney. Finney had downloaded the Bitcoin software on its release date, and received the first transaction on January 12, 2009. 10 bitcoins were transferred to him from Nakamoto. The following year, in 2010, the first commercial transaction with bitcoin took place, when programmer Laszlo Hanyex bought two Papa John's pizzas for 100,000 bitcoins from Jeremy Sturdivant. In 2010, Nakamoto disappeared from the bitcoin network and analysts believe that users had managed to create around 1 million bitcoins before his disappearance and handed over the code repository to a man named Gavin Anderson. To promote the development and use of Bitcoin, the Bitcoin Foundation was created in 2012. In 2017, researchers at the University of Cambridge, estimated that there are between 2.9 and 5.8 million unique users with a cryptocurrency wallet, and Bitcoin was at the top of the digital currency used. On February 1, 2018, China completely banned Bitcoin from being used in the country. If this video had been on YouTube in December 2019, it would probably have been taken down. Because back then, YouTube removed all videos containing information about Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, but later luckily changed their guidelines. In August 2020, MicroStrategy invested $250 million in Bitcoin as a financial reserve asset and in November that same year, PayPal announced that US users were buying and selling Bitcoin through their service. At the beginning of 2021, Elon Musk went out of his way to say that Tesla can now be bought with Bitcoin, but changed his mind a few months later, stating that they will no longer accept Bitcoin as a means of payment. Musk later announced that if Bitcoin would start using more renewable energy, Tesla will accept Bitcoin as means of payment. In September 2021, Bitcoin became one of the official currencies in El Salvador. Some say that anarchists were the first group of people attracted to the philosophical idea behind Bitcoin. Early Bitcoin supporter Roger Ver has stated the following, At first, almost everyone who got involved did it for philosophical reasons. We saw Bitcoin as a good idea, as a way to separate money from the state. Economist Paul Krugman agrees, but with a slight different view to it, saying that Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies are based on paranoid fantasies about government power. Thank you for watching, please hit the thumbs up button, comment, and don't forget to subscribe.